Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wogi, and I'm in Media Res in Dragalia Lost as I am currently grinding through the Halloween event. Um, today's video is going to be me grinding this Halloween event while talking about some stuff in Dragalia that I want to talk about. Um, first things first, I know there's a new event coming. There's no unit info. The second there's unit info, I'll gladly talk about them and kind of break them down. Um, and by break them down, I mean give my opinions on them, which should not be treated as the end-all be-all just because I'm not the greatest Dragalia player. I mean, I beat, um, I've beaten some Mastery High Dragon Trials and, um, some Agidos, of course, but I feel like the people who are actually good at this game have already moved on to soloing everything in this game and are also kind of leaving the game, so... Or only playing specifically when there's a new hard boss coming. So that's kind of one of the things I wanted to talk about. Specifically because it's been spurred by a lot of news about Nintendo. And specifically Nintendo's current views on the mobile market, which is them basically saying, we're not making enough money, so we're kind of not leaving it, but we're kind of dialing everything back. Um, and what does that actually mean for Dragalia? Because I think when I looked at the the net the net loss for Dragalia, it ended up being like, yeah, Dragalia is one of the games they make most, but they don't like to get the most money for them. I think it's Fire Emblem Heroes, maybe Animal Crossing, and then Dragalia. It might be Dragalia over Animal Crossing. I can't tell how much the um, the new Animal Crossing kind of pushed the old Animal Crossing got not even a gotcha game, the old Animal Crossing game a little bit higher up. I don't I don't remember that much. Uh, they make the most money, but then also they lose a lot of money. And I thought, like, it's not even on Dragalia specifically. They lose a lot of money on Fire Emblem Heroes, apparently. Like, Fire Emblem Heroes makes them the most money, and they lose the most money from Fire Emblem Heroes. Then after that is Dragalia Lost, and then it is Pocket Camp. Um, and the main thing that they wanted to say was, like... Which has always been weird about the push from Nintendo, is that, one, they've always said that their push when they started making it is that they didn't want to play the game that um, a lot of like gacha games play, which is to be extremely exploitative because they were afraid that if they were too exploitative, exploitative? Ex if they exploited too many people that, um, I just realized I could have done it from in here. That's fine. I'm going to switch over to squash the pumpkin. Um, basically they were afraid of people looking less on Nintendo due to the actions of their mobile division, which is what, which is why I'm like, when I looked at that chart, you have always have to look at those charts about the money loss is specifically like, yo, the reason they don't make a lot of money on Dragalia is because they specifically told Psy Games, don't make this like you do other gotchas. And when you do that, it turns out like, oh, so, what do we do? Like, wh how do you expect us to make money when the only way to really make money with gotchas is to be as um, kind of money hungry as possible? That's kind of the entire market of the game. Uh, that's what. That's why Fake Grand Order is number one. Like their rates have barely changed, and they're always at number one, and they offer plenty of JPEGs or your waifus. Let's um, do not lose focus. It's why Dokkan is so loved because they offer you pictures of Goku um, and the rates are bad the banners are actively bad um, the coin system is the only thing that kind of redeems Dokkan in any sort of way in terms of pulling but the actual pulling on Dokkan is maybe for me personally when I say this worse than Fake Grand Order and Fake Grand Order is actively sometimes against you in all points in terms of useless crap, I get more useless crap from, from Dokkan compared to um, Fate, but that's all based on luck anyway. I still feel like um, Fate gets the upper by having threes and fours actually matter, whereas opposed to Dokkan where Rs and SRs don't actually matter. That's also the kind of thing about Dragalia is that like they give you a lot of free stuff. Like even if you... When I started this month, I had lost maybe 20,000 Wormite. And since then, not summoning at all, not using any tickets, I'm almost at 50 tickets, and I'm with I have three multi tickets. It's kind of crazy, and I'm back also up 20,000. So it's kind of like there's no point to spend anything in Dragalia. There really isn't. Like the people who whale this game, I don't understand why you whale. 
Um, Cause it just feels like in terms of the bang for your buck, it's not there for this game. I don't know, like obviously I don't um, judge you for spending the money that you want. Um, if you, it's your money and I don't really, if, this is not a way of saying like calling you out. It's more like I don't fully understand, except for dream tickets. Dream tickets are fantastic. I really like those, but I think for a whale there's like diminishing returns on those, I would think anyway. If you're a whale and you want to talk about your specific whaling process, I would be very interested to learn like what do you like spending on. Because it really doesn't feel like there's ever much reason to spend anything. Um, the diamonds don't really help as much as they used to. Like, they've actively made the, the things that you spend diamonds on worse. Like, if you remember back in the, um, uh, the launch of Dragalia when the first Fire Emblem crossover came up, that paid gotcha summon that was all the Fire Emblem Heroes uh, characters, and they were the only ones on the banner, and you pulled on it once and you got one of them, that was like crazy good and they've brought back that specific summon in the past and it's always been a worse version of that specific summon like the dream summon has never been as good as it was when it debuted at least that's how i feel about it and i no i ended up not spending on it but i totally wanted to just because i was like this is such an insane thing i've never seen a gotcha make something like this but then it feels like at some point i don't know why but they dialed back on a lot of that stuff. So I feel like at some point, and specifically when you play Dragalia now, maybe it's a little bit weirder now, just specifically because they've kind of changed how Gala Banners are doing. Um, I'm wondering if they're trying to get as much money as possible before it's time, before Nintendo basically says, this is it. But here's another thing that I want to say, let's say that's the dark side. Let's talk about the potential bright side. Um, a lot of the reasons that they're even saying a lot of the things that they're saying is because it's the Switch. The Switch has shown that they don't need a phone to capture the market like they used to. And I would I would also, if I could specifically talk to Nintendo, I would say you need to re recognize the fact that when Animal Crossing launched, it was under a fucking pandemic. So people needed something to play that would take a real long time for the, throughout the entire pandemic. The lightning in the bottle that was the Animal Crossing phenom phenomenon, I don't think it would have happened without the pandemic. I think a lot of people would have played Animal Crossing and loved it, but if it wasn't under the context of I'm not leaving this house for months, I don't think Animal Crossing sells as well as it does. Um, it sells really well in my version of history that I've alternated for myself. Um, anyway, to get back to my point, the bright side, I think there's maybe a chance I'm going to put a big old maybe on this one. This is, again, bright side, pie in the sky, of maybe Dragalia finding its way onto the Switch in some in some way. And if we get Dragalia on Switch, I think they would have to change basically everything about the game because they would have to actually make it into a video game that you play with controls as opposed to touchscreen based. So that would mean making, I guess, combos a little bit more sense. Um increasing the graphics maybe the chibis are gone and now they're full-fledged characters i don't know but then it's something that you can play like there's a dragalia lost console game and then there's a dragalia lost phone game and i would guess in my mind the console game mm, actually you could do like a grand blue fantasy versus where um the characters from that game are in this game but it doesn't follow the story it just you have to know this i don't know I think for the first Regalia Lost game on there, they would probably have to make it into an actual video game, if I were to think about it. Um, but yeah, the main thing to think about whenever you hear a lot of that news is that one, a lot of the things they're talking about are specifically games that are Nintendo games brought to the phone. Dragalia Lost is the only Nintendo game that is an original IP. Therefore, there currently is no Switch game that could be seen as the sim similar of it, it's basically the same. Um, so I don't really think there's any reason to worry until, unless you see that uh, Dracalia Loss is coming to the Switch, then I'd start worrying. Cause then it becomes a thing of like, well, if this is really good, what's the point of keeping it on phones? And then I think from that point on, we maybe get less, less focus on the phone, I don't know. 
that's my current thoughts on it anyway. It's a very interesting subject, and it's a lot of things to think about. Um, the worst case scenario is that Dragalia Lost is lost forever, and it joins the histories of video games, that, of, of gacha games that have just been basically cut off. It joins our collection. It joins all the Hunter x Hunter games that have ever been released on the phone. Um, it joins like a, a legion of so many different things. Like, it's hard to think about what the future entails for Jigalia. Um, I just don't think it's all doom and gloom. I think the people who are doom and glooming it are thinking short term and aren't considering the fact that Jigalia Lost is an original IP built for the phone. Um, so unless they somehow make a Switch game, I don't really see Dragalia Lost leaving at any point. But hey, who knows? I could be 100% wrong. Let's see how what the future holds. But that's it for today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. There hasn't been a lot of Dragalia stuff, but it looks like it might be picking up with the new events. I really, after Halloween Ellie's kind of bad turn, I didn't really feel like um, making many videos of the game. But I'm kind of back in the mood for it, especially with new stuff coming. So that's today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to leave a like. Comment about how you currently feel about Dragalia. I know a lot of people, especially um, a lot of the hardcore, aren't currently happy with the state of the game. And I understand it. Um, just because I like something doesn't mean everyone has to like something. And specifically, gacha games are built over the fact that people constantly leave it and come back to it. Um, that's just the way. That's just the way the game is played. To be honest, um, comment, like, subscribe if you want more of this kind of stuff. I have other videos, of course, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day. See ya.